rooted in substance, not flash, rooted in substance. Today, we talk with our pads. You talk with your helmet, right? Every moment. The Cinderella story is over, man, right? They're fighting for clicks, we're fighting for wins. There's a difference, right? There's a difference, right? This game ain't gonna be played in Hollywood, it's gonna be played on the grass, right? It's gonna be played on the grass. Let's go. A little longer than a few minutes later. Uh, it translates in practice. It is, I don't say stuff just to say it for a click, you know, contrary to what some may say. But, uh, yeah, I, get, I keep receipts. Uh, but I'm serious. I analyze and I understand what we're up against and what we have and what we need. One thing that I can say honestly and candidly, you better get me right now. This is the worst we're going to be. You better get me right now. Now, somebody, yeah, I, I got messengers. God bless him, though, man. He's a great coach. He did a great job. God bless him. He take their shots. They won. I don't shoot. I don't do that. They won. All right, guys. So we got to talk about this Deion Sanders story, okay? And the reason why we got to talk about the Deion Sanders story once again is because I find this Deion Sanders story to be particularly fascinating because I do think that this story is the reason why racism is still so prevalent in our country or the illusion of racism okay because i want you guys to understand um the people that are crying racism in regards to the critiques of Deion sanders are the exact same type of people that will find racism if their white neighbor happens to not say good morning to them every single day day right that is what we're talking about here okay and this is something that i see so much among black people and it is extremely annoying because black people take any type of microaggression or criticism and they say well it's racist right you must be racist against me because you are criticizing me right when criticism should be able to be levied against anybody regardless of their race again the same people that boohoo whine and cry and beg for equal treatment actually don't like equal treatment when they do get equal treatment right when you get equally criticized like everybody else uh apparently that's a problem when you do it towards black people and Again, the Deion Sanders story is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, to update you guys on what's going on here, Deion Sanders, the coach of the Colorado college football team, got a slice of humble pie. Now, again, if you guys aren't familiar with this story, most of you guys should be familiar with it. Deion Sanders came from an HBCU to become the head coach of Colorado. Deion Sanders did it in a very unorthodox way. He's a very flashy individual. He embraces hip-hop culture. He wears chains. Uh, he basically is a non-traditional coach and it's worked for him, right? It worked at Jackson State, okay? And at Colorado, at least the first three games, it seemed like it was working there as well too. I mean, it, it kind of is working. I mean, the, the team only won one game last year. So yeah, he's already improved the football team and made the program better, right? I mean, they've already probably got their money back <laughs> from whatever they're paying Deion Sanders just based off the advertising revenue that this guy's bought in. But again, the team was, I think, 3-0 going into yesterday to face Oregon. Oregon, a, a real top 10 football team, a football team that, you know, actually can compete for the national championship. And they got a slice of humble pie, okay? Nobody should be surprised because this team was a very, very, very cocky team, okay? They had a lot of swag. They were feeling themselves, okay? They were running around in luxury cars, flashing, doing commercials, I mean, again, this is as unorthodox as it gets, okay? And all that is all fine and well when you're winning, right? It's great when you're winning. However, when you lose, that's when you start to see what a team is actually really made of, somebody's real character. Because a lot of times, uh, these teams or, or players that are extremely cocky when they start to lose, they don't handle losses well. And because of the nature of the fact that, you know, you have a coach that is doing it in an untraditional way, okay, he's very cocky, he's very out there, right, he's not humble, what happens is that you're going to have people that are going to root against you, okay, they're going to say, you know what, you know, I'm going to root against Deion Sanders because I think he's too cocky, I don't like the way he carries himself, has nothing to do with his skin color, has everything to do with his character and the way he acts, and me personally, I'm a fan of Deion Sanders, right, I'm not a big fan of, you know, 
the narcissism okay but hey i get it you know i think that there's a degree of narcissism needed to be great at anything especially if you're a celebrity type if you get a lot of attention or whatever i think a degree of it is needed so i'm not necessarily super critical of it as i would be if it was at like i don't know the high school level or something like that but i'm just saying I'm rooting for Deion Sanders. However, I understand why people can see somebody like him and say, hey, you know what? I I don't want that guy to win, right? I want this guy to lose because I just don't like the way he carries himself. Has nothing to do with his skin color. So anyways, yesterday, uh, the Colorado Buffalo, Buffaloes, led by Deion Sanders and his son, got blown out, right? I watched the game, a little bit of it, and it was terrible, okay? I mean, I, I think it was like 21-0 skunk in like the second quarter. The game ended up being like 42 to 6 or something. I mean, Colorado couldn't do anything, okay? They, they look like a high school football team out there versus Oregon. They just didn't look like they were in the same league, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. They just didn't look good, okay? They looked like they didn't belong there, like they were punching above their weight class, which they were. I mean, definitely uh, in the O-line and D-line. I mean, they don't. <laughs> they really need to do some hardcore recruiting there and get some bigger boys because they just... They just don't look as big as some of these other football teams. So, hey, they're probably overplaying, right? They're probably overperforming. And yesterday's uh, blowout to Oregon basically proved that, okay? This team is, is not as good as, as we thought they were, right? Um, and, again, Deion Sanders, okay, the whole thing, ever since he went into Colorado um, and the way he started doing the things he's been doing, yeah, he's been getting criticized. People have been saying things about it. And the race hustlers of America want to boo-hoo, whine, and cry racism, right? They've been saying, oh, well, all the criticism Deion Sanders receives is, is racist, right? Everything is racist, okay? So fast forward to today, again, post-blowout, right? Uh, Post-humble pie, you have the race hustlers of America, a.k.a. Black Twitter. Uh, they are crying racism because some people are saying, hey, I'm glad that Colorado lost. Like, for example, this person right here. Is saying uh, in response to Kerry Steele, who says, Oregon is taking a stand for all of us, right? Everybody who wants to see Deion Sanders lose. Again, not because he's black, but because of his attitude and the way he carries himself. This person says, this is coded language, y'all, for those that are looking for something, right? Well, you are obviously looking for something, right? You obviously think that every criticism of Deion Sanders or somebody who just says, I I'm rooting against Colorado, uh, that happens to be racism, okay? That and them humility comments, right? So telling a coach to have some humility or telling a black person to have some humility, again, is, is racism, right? Oh, yeah, Oregon, the state that literally had no blacks allowed in their constitution until the 2000s and didn't pass by 100% margin. <laughs> Dan Lanny, equal villain. <laughs> yeah, they are so happy. Uh, they hated the fact that this man was winning. Yeah. So again, they want to make it about race, <laughs> right? And as this person rightfully points out here, same thing happened to Conor McGregor. It's not about race. If you're going to be unapolog unapologetically cocky in victory, then you can't turn around and cry victim in defeat. Facts, right? At least somebody sees it for what it is, okay? This happens all the time in sports. doesn't matter if you're black, white, whatever. If you don't carry yourself in a humble way, if you're cocky, if you're overly confident, people are going to celebrate when you lose, right? That's just the nature of sports. But again, these people don't understand that. This person <laughs> says, these coaches are one speech away from calling D. Island, Colorado uppity N-words. Their choice of words clearly shows that they... Their hate of Dion goes much further than football. They don't believe black people who look like him deserve to be where they are. <laughs> yeah. So again, on this tweet, you have over 3,000 retweets, okay? Uh, over 15K likes. Now, I only like uh, tweets uh, as bookmarks, guys, because I know some people ask questions about why I like certain tweets. I only like tweets as bookmarks, right? Tweets are not, they're not endorsements. I don't like using the bookmark feature on Twitter, so I think, you know, likes are much easier. So, again, my likes are not endorsements. This person says, come on, Stu, nah. How you get all this from a coach's pregame speech? LOL, it was a pregame speech speaking from the context of all the hype around Sanders and their program. He used, he said hype to fire up this team. Yeah, so again, this is in reference to the speech that I played at the beginning of this video in which the coach basically talks about how 
hey, that team is overly confident. That team is playing for clicks. They're playing for likes. They're playing for clout. They're playing for social media. They're playing for Hollywood, right? And they need to be humble. This is a game of football, right? This is not Hollywood. This ain't showtime. This ain't prime time, right? This is football, okay? And I think that he gave a perfect speech. I think his speech was very appropriate and it made sense, right? I mean, that's what he did to motivate his guys to go out there and win. This person responded, said, bruh, I've been at this thing for a minute, done, played with the best of them, done seen and heard many pregame and postgame speeches. These weeks have been different. Yeah, so again, any coach that comes out and gives a pregame speech, uh, rallying up his team to beat Deion Sanders' Buffalo team, racism, right? You're a racist, okay? So in their ideal world, a coach don't say anything before the game, right? They say nothing before the game, and they go out there and they, they just play the game. And even then, if they win, they're racist, right? Again, they did the same thing with the head coach of Colorado State, who's black, right? Who's black, by the way. They tried to say that the dude was racist because he had criticisms of Deion Sanders wearing sunglasses, which I do think Deion Sanders wearing sunglasses indoors is is something that I, I don't really like that much. But, you know, hey. <laughs> is this really turning into race? You can't make this up. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. They, they are turning into race. It can't just be football, bro. It can't just be, right? It can't just be football. No, it's not with these people. It's always race. They're so mad. This person says, the racism towards Deion Sanders is despicable, but we have seen this movie before. Certain kinds of folks have a huge problem with confident and visionary black males, including in sports, but it, uh, Muhammad Ali or uh, Michigan's Fat Five, same kind of haterism. <laughs> Again, absolutely amazing. These people want to be victims so bad. They really want people to think that people are rooting against Deion Sanders because he's a black man. When there are black men, there are young black men on the football field that people are rooting for every Saturday and Sunday. Okay? People are rooting for them. There are white men on the field that people are rooting for. And they're rooting against, right? Based off the team. Has nothing to do with their skin color. Again, these people are the ones keeping racism alive. As black people, we cannot support coaches talking ish to Deion Sanders because that ish uh, be undertone racism. I don't care what y'all say. They hate on that man for being black and confident. He don't talk about anybody. Yeah, so again, what you have here, what you have here um, is this idea that, again, it's not because he's confident, he's cocky. His attitude, no, 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 it's because he's black, right? Because he's black. Again, uh, no, no white person ever got criticism for being, you know, overly confident. Like, you know, for example, Johnny Manziel or Conor McGregor or, you know, no white person ever got criticized for that, right? Again, it's amazing, okay? I remember so many people celebrating uh, Conor McGregor when he started to lose, right? When his career started to go down the drain, I remember so many people celebrating it, right? Because he was overly confident, this person says, the amount of implicit racism I've seen from people rooting for the downfall of Deion Sanders is the saddest thing uh, of all of this. Pathetic how many white people hate to see a confident black man succeeding in life. Now, again, apparently this person is uh, is white. <laughs> Will Darkey, right? Which, again, probably tells you everything you need to know about this guy, right? What he's about. But apparently he, he goes to uh, Colorado. Okay, he's been rooting for them. And then you have Tariq Nasheed, okay? Race hustle number one. He says, when white supremacists try to take a victory lap before the game is over. So you, can you know, maybe if Coach Prime didn't have Yo! MTV raps in the locker room before the game, at halftime after the game, maybe they'd be in control of this game instead of getting beat like a drum. <laughs> I mean, it's flat out embarrassing. He's running the f***ing uh, Yo! MTV. got flat, fab, fried, freddy, whatever the f*** is, flavor, 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 flavor. I'm, what an embarrassment. This clown talks a good game. He's got f***ing Yo! MTV raps in the locker room. This he ain't no coach. That's not a football program. That's an MTV house party, Yo! MTV raps. It's an embarrassment. It's an abomination. And it's a liability. Don't send your kids there. If you send your kid to Deion Sanders, he's going to come out wearing a hunk of gold, gold chain. <laughs> he ain't getting a job. He ain't even getting a and diploma. He's gonna get himself a criminal record hanging out with Deion Sanders in his Fab Five Freddy Yo Empty Rep. Go, 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 go. Dance. 
<laughs> Yo, again, this is hilarious, right? Again, you know, people are gonna boo hoo wild and cry racism. Now, that one right there was that one was. Yeah, look, I ain't gonna say it was racist. At the end of the day, he said nothing about Deion Sanders' skin color. He talked more about how he act. Okay, so again, to me personally, uh, this happens to any athlete, black or white, or any coach, black or white, anybody that has this celebrity status or that is competing in some type of competitive event, and they're overly confident. People are going to root against you. Um, it has nothing to do with your skin color. And, you know, again, it's like I told you guys, these are the people that are keeping racism alive in this country, right? These are the people who won't let it go. They see racism with any type of microaggressions, any criticism of black people is racist, right? You can't criticize a black person without being a racist in 2023. It's it's really amazing stuff to see. It really is. And that's why this Deion Sanders story is so interesting because eventually this was going to happen. He was going to get a slice of humble pie. And of course, in response the, the race hustles of America want to say, well, it's racism, right? That's why people was rooting against them because people are celebrating. Amazing. Again, black. it seems like some of these people don't want to be treated. They really don't want to be treated equally, right? They don't even want to be able to watch sports and to root for or against teams in, in the way or the same way that normal people do, right? They don't want it, right? They don't want to be a part of normal society. It, it's just so obvious to me. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.